Good morning. Welcome to Ask Coffee Online. I'm Chef Caesar. Today we're going to talk about soupy. And I have a very special guest today who's going to let you know how you can do soupy at home without spending a lot of money. And it's very easy, and uh, he's going to show us some great uh, tricks. Welcome, Chef Randall. Hi. Hey, everybody. I'm Chef Randall. Today, as Chef Caesar said, we're going to talk about sous vide. As many of you know, we launched a sous vide course here on Escoffier Online a few weeks ago, and we've gotten quite a few questions from the students. So we figured this would be a great opportunity to kind of come on, talk through some of the questions that we've had, and really kind of demonstrate that while you can do sous vide and spend a lot of money, you can spend thousands of dollars, this is also a technique that can be replicated at home for little to no money. So depending on how much money you want to spend to actually use this technique in your kitchen and in your repertoire, there's a solution for you. So we're going to kind of walk through those. But before we get started, let's kind of talk about what sous vide is. Because some people may be listening going, I don't, I don't even know what right, sous vide is. Right. So sous vide is a, a fancy French word that means under vacuum. Um, and the principles of it are basically that we're going to cook something in a vacuum sealed bag. But we're going to cook it at a very precise temperature. And it's those two things together that really make sous vide what it is. Um, if we take product and we cook it at a low temperature, below 140, as many of you know, that's below the danger zone. So usually you want to cook something higher than 140 degrees. But if we can remove the oxygen, if we can put it in a vacuum sealed bag, remove the oxygen, we can actually cook at lower temperatures very safely. Now, the benefits of some of this are a very precise cooking temperature, but also the ability to cook something for a long period of time and never overcook it. Um, for instance, we're going to do a steak today, and we'll get to this in a few minutes. But a steak to be cooked medium rare is about 134 degrees. Now, when you think about your traditional way of cooking a steak and you're cooking it on a grill or searing it in a pan, to be able to get that center to 134 degrees, you've got to heat the outsides up to over 200 degrees. So, so a 25 to 30 percent of your steak overcooked. is actually overcooked. Exactly. So with sous vide, because we're going to set our water temperature, and we'll get into the hows and whys in a few minutes, we're going to set it at 134 degrees. Our steak can never be overcooked. We could leave it in here for four hours, and it would never actually be overcooked. It'd be perfectly cooked. So if we're not going to get into a lot of the hows and the techniques of sous vide today. Um, we have a course. You're welcome to, to take a look at that. Um, we'll do some more of these webinars and, and focus on some of the techniques. But today, let's talk about some of the equipment and how it works. Wonderful. Okay. So what do we got over here, Chef? All right, so our cheapest option, hands down. <laughs> you probably have this in the garage already. The cheapest option is an igloo ice chest. So these are designed to keep things cold, to keep your sodas cold, your beer cold, whatever you're putting in here. But they also work the other way around. Because it's an insulated container, we can put hot things in here, just like when you think about a thermos that you take your coffee places in, and it'll hold that temperature. In fact, they lose about one to two degrees per hour. So if we were to put water in here, so today we're doing shrimp, if we, and we cook shrimp at 134 degrees, if we put our water in here, if we heat it up in a pan to 134, dump it in there, dump it in here, for the next two hours, it's going to be between 134 and 130 degrees. So we can actually put our shrimp in here, something that cooks quickly. Shrimp, steaks, things like that, small cuts of meat, Eggs, they'll cook very quickly in here. Maybe some soft vegetables still? Absolutely. So you need to get the water a little bit hotter. Vegetables need to cook at 180. Mm -hmm. So if you bring that up because of the cell structure of the plants. But if, if you do that and you're going to cook for an hour to an hour and a half is about as far as I would go in an igloo unless you're going to continually monitor it and add additional hot water to it. Um, so today we've got shrimp in here. Um, we've taken our shrimp. We've put the water in 134 degrees. Okay, And we've even used a Ziploc bag. Now there's a technique for getting all of the air out. You can see that all of the air from this, this shrimp has been removed. But we just put the product in here with the bag unzipped. In fact, let me demonstrate it for you. We'll unzip the bag. As we lower it into the water, it displaces the air. And then we can zip it, zip it shut once we have that done. And it basically gives us shrimp in an oxygen-free environment. Okay? So this shrimp has been cooked for about 15 minutes at 134 degrees. Now, the benefits of this is that almost every time you've ever eaten shrimp in your entire life, it's been overcooked. Okay? That's you right. Put, you put this stuff into a pan. Everybody wants to be super careful to make sure that it's cooked enough. You end up with little balls of styrofoam that, that, that they lose all the texture and all the things that make it great. So by cooking this in the water bath, we can never overcook it. Now, I've added a pat of butter and a couple slices of garlic to this because we're going to do kind of a play on scampi today. So I've added that for flavoring, um, and then we'll plate it up with our other, with our other items. This we're not going to sear. Okay, so we'll get back to the searing question in a minute. Our next machine here, this is the sous vide supreme. They run about $300. You can buy them on Amazon. Um, and for all of these things, we'll put links in the forums if anybody wants to check them out later. Or if you have questions, we can, we can suit you over some Wonderful. information. This is your all-in-one household, don't even think about it kind of contraption. 
It works like a giant crock pot, except it holds a very exact temperature. So you set your temperature, you put your product in here, and it even comes with a vacuum sealer, kind of like a food saver. So you get, with one purchase, you get both your water bath and your vacuum sealer, the two parts that really make sous vide work. So we open this up. I think we have an aerial view here. So here we have some chicken thighs. These chicken thighs are cooking at 155 degrees. Um, brings them all up to a safe temperature with the bacteria. And uh, we've cooked these for a longer period of time. So I wanted to do kind of like a confit. So duck confit traditionally, you cure it, a lot of and fat. then you cook it in a lot of fat, right? It, you, don't, you have to cover it completely. Yes, yes. And then you cook it for about 12 hours. Well, I can get the exact same flavor, the exact same texture, in just a few hours in here with just a tablespoon of fat. Much healthier, so it, too. So it is healthier. Um, so I, I did a quick cure on this chicken. We'll pull this out here. I did a quick cure on this chicken. I'll move these shrimp out of the way so you can see it here. Quick cure, I rub them down with salt and spices, let them sit for a few hours. I packed them into the zip into the, um, the, I'm sorry, the vacuum bag with some fresh herbs and just a little bit of chicken fat. Um, most of what you see here is actually the juice that's all mingled in there for the, all the flavoring. Now with the chicken, we've cooked it without searing it. It's gone straight into the bag and then into the water bath to be cooked. Um, it cooked for about two and a half hours at 155 degrees. Made the, made the meat incredibly juicy, incredibly tender. tender. But our skin is, is soft and nobody likes chewy, soft chicken skin. So Chef Caesar is actually going to pop this bag open for us and sear this off. So with sous vide, you have two different options. You can sear after you, after you cook it. So we're, we've cooked here, and now we're going to sear to get a nice crispy skin. But with our steaks, we actually pre-seared. So I Absolutely. seared the steaks before I packed them up in the bags. So it, it'll come straight out of the water bath and be ready to go right to the, right to the plate. But, take, but steaks, when you do that, they don't really have a crispiness to them. They have, you know, they have the flavor, the Maillard reaction. The color. But with chicken and skin, it's really important that we do a post sear. We sear afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to let you start with these guys. Care of this. I'm going to go ahead and plate up these shrimp while you're getting that going. Okay. So make sure I'm actually on camera here. All right, so with our shrimp today, we're doing kind of a play on shrimp scampi, which shrimp scampi is a dish of sautéed shrimp with garlic, little tomatoes, and uh, some parsley usually served over some type of pasta. So what we've done is we've taken our, our sous vide shrimp, we've cooked them off with a little bit of butter and garlic, and now we're going to place them on top of roasted tomatoes. Pull these out here. So I have some oven roasted tomatoes. These are just great varieties of heirloom tomatoes. So we're going to top our shrimp off here. I have a little bit of pasta here that's been cooked in a little bit of turmeric water to really make it bright and yellow. And I've topped it with a, an herb oil. So I've taken some, some parsley and garlic and I've cooked it in a little bit of olive oil just to kind of pull out some of the flavor and just dress the, the pasta lightly. It gives it a nice flavor, a little freshness to it. We have a beurre blanc, which is a white butter sauce that we're going we're gonna to finish our shrimp with. Chef, how do you keep the juices from being vacuumed into the seal? The question was, Chef, how do we keep the juices from being vacuumed into the seal? Okay, so that's, that was actually a big challenge for me. Um, so as I was getting prepared for this lesson, I'm used to using a chamber vacuum. So in a restaurant, we have vacuum chambers. You drop it, looks it like in. like this machine. Yeah, you yeah I, can, I can literally uh, vacuum seal soups and all kinds of stuff. But I was using the one that actually came with this, which is like a food saver. And the trick to be able to get the juices to stay in the bag is to use a longer bag than you think you would need by almost double. So it, it almost feels a little bit wasteful, but it's very important to be able to get this, um, to get those juices. And so as I would vacuum them and I'd see the air come out of the bag, I would see the juices start to run mm. towards the machine. And that's when I'd hit the seal button. And it was, it was, it was kind of a race, you know. <laughs> you you got to kind of hit that, otherwise it makes a big mess. But it, as long as you don't have too much juice in there, um, and for the most part, I was putting in butter and herbs. Um, and then I was just, just fighting with the natural juices that were coming out of uh, the meat products and stuff like that. Oh, but great. you do have to time it just right with those home, with those home units. I have to admit I'm a little spoiled. <laughs> so with our shrimp, we've added our beurre blanc, our butter sauce to kind of give us the scampi feel. I have some fried garlic chips here. I've taken elephant garlic and I've fried them off in some oil to make them nice and crispy. So we're going to top our pasta with that because you can't have scampi without garlic. No, nope. So we've got some fried garlic chips. And then this is really interesting here. This is tomato char, or tomato ash. So as I roasted the tomatoes, what I ended up with was a lot of juice left on my pan. And mm -hmm. I had a, a silicone baking mat. So with that juice, I put the juice back in the oven and let it caramelize. 
and it almost you know kind of turns this black and gets real hard and crispy but what it does is it gives us this beautiful little presentation on the shrimp but when you go to eat it it gives you that that seasoning of the sear it almost has like a grilled shrimp flavor by adding that on there and you can see how striking it looks just with the color it looks wonderful chef so here's our our shrimp scampi sous vide ready to go Absolutely. You want to make sure that you thaw it. Oh, I didn't. The Go question ahead. was, can you package the product with spices and use them for later on? And freeze them. Is what freeze they, them. What yes, they freeze them as well. So yes, you can freeze them. You want to make sure that your product is completely defrosted before you go into your water bath. Because if you go into the water bath with a, with a frozen product, it's going to lower that temperature down and you're going to get into an unsafe zone. So you make sure that when you, if you're going to freeze it, you can actually, you can prepare meals for the entire month, um, season them up, freeze them, and then pull them out. Just make sure they're completely defrosted and almost to room temperature even. I usually take my meat out of the refrigerator 30 minutes to an hour before I'm actually ready to start cooking it because I want it to come up. I don't want too abrupt of a temperature change. It makes the muscles a little tough. Okay. You may have already addressed it, but after you take it out of the freezer, can you just throw it right into the sous vide? The question yeah. was, after you take the product out of the freezer, can you throw it into the sous vide machine? Right, and that's right. what we just said, yeah. is that, that that's going to lower your water temperature dramatically. Um, I, I just wouldn't do that. I'd, I'd pull it out, let it completely defrost. Again, it's vacuum sealed, so throw it in the refrigerator overnight. It can stay. Let it sit there, and then you'll be ready to go tomorrow. Well, we have our chicken nice and crispy over here. As you can see, it was really quick. It, co it cooked quicker than when you do a raw chicken. Let me pull you back over here to the camera. Yeah, so we can see this here. So, so ch our chicken is done. It was really fast to, to get brown because it's already cooked. So it's quicker than cooking a raw piece of chicken. As you can see, it only took a couple minutes to get nice and brown and crispy. You can Listen, can you hear it? Nice and crunchy. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it sounds delicious. So, all right, so I'm gonna push this back over to the side here. Let's go ahead and slice that up. We're gonna do a sous vide chicken salad. So here we have some arugula dressed with a, a light red wine vinegar dressing. Uh, we have roasted golden beets and roasted red beets, little sunflower seeds. And we're going to top that with a few slices of our sous vide chicken with our crispy skin. This is wonderful. It's so oh, tender and smells soft. Smells beautiful. And then we'll finish this off with one of the eggs that we actually sous vide before the show. So it's kind of a, a version of a poached egg. Let me get on camera here. There we go. So we have crispy skin sous vide chicken with an arugula salad and a sous vide egg. Very, very autumn, um, delicious lunch or a nice start to a great nice meal. Nice and healthy, too. Yeah. And, you know, it really can't be any easier with a sous vide. You know, you and I were talking the other day about... How do we do, you know, banquets? Exactly. So Chef Caesar was telling me stories about doing banquets in the restaurants, and they always they say they're going to eat at 8 o'clock. They never start until 9. When you're trying to do steaks, which is our, our last setup here, you're trying to do steaks for 100 people or 200 people, and then they're an hour late, timing it is... is a nightmare. Crucial. It's crucial. And with something like sous vide, we can put this in much bigger containers. Um, and this is, a, this is our last product here, which is an immersion circulator, which is my personal favorite. Um, this one just hit the market oh, maybe two or three months ago. They used to be about $900. This one's 160 bucks, which is wow. still kind of pricey, um, but it works incredibly well and can actually go into a container twice or even three times the size and will still heat up the water and circulate everything. But with you had, if you had 200 steaks, you could put them all into one water bath, cook them all to a perfect 134 degrees, so they're perfectly medium rare. And hold them there. And hold them there. And if the bride shows up two hours late, the Do dinner's not ruined. You're still going to be able to cook perfectly, perfectly cooked steaks and deliver them straight to order. Beautiful. All right, so the way that this system works, here's the, this is our New York strip. Now, earlier we talked about searing, pre-searing and post-searing. This one was actually seared before I put it into the water bath. So I seared the steaks while they were still very cold because I didn't want to cook them. I just wanted to brown the outside, get that Maillard reaction started, season them up with a little salt and pepper, put some butter on there, um, and then vacuum sealed them and cooked them at 134 degrees. They take about 45 minutes, which some people say, well, I can cook a steak much faster than 45 minutes. But that's the beauty, right? Yeah. When I have people coming over for dinner or I'm cooking for a big banquet, I don't have to worry about timing because it takes 45 minutes for it to come up to temperature. But it can also sit in this water bath the next two or three hours without overcooking. So I can put these on early and worry about all the other things that I want to do. I have time to make tomato ash if I'm, if I'm doing things like this with the steak. Beautiful. I know that it'll be perfect. I know that my timing will be precise. I don't have to worry about it. So it's a, it's a beautiful method. 
Other things that happen is that you think about pot roast. What makes pot roast delicious is that we cook it for a long time. You know, we take a tough piece of meat that has a lot of flavor, cook it for a long time until it wants to just kind of fall apart. But you can't do a medium rare pot roast. No. It just doesn't happen. But you can with sous vide. So if we were to take short ribs or an eye of round and we're to cook them in sous vide, I mean, you can do a short rib for 72 hours in a water bath at 134 degrees, and it'll have all the wonderful richness and deep flavor of a pot roast and a braised dish, but still be medium rare. So it still has that, that freshness and that juiciness. It's, it's an unbelievable experience. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let you cut into this steak. I'm going to talk a little more about this immersion circulator. The way that this machine works um, is that it actually pulls water up in the bottom, heats it up, and pushes it out. So not only is it warming the water like these other contraptions do, but it's also keeping the water moving, which is like the difference between a conventional oven and a convection oven, is that it has that, that heat is moving around, so you don't end up with any hot spots. So it cooks extremely even, which is why we could, we could pack a lot of different things into this water bath and not worry about it being unevenly cooked. That water keeps moving and it keeps everything, everything flowing perfectly. Okay, so Chef Caesar's getting that steak ready. I'll go ahead and finish our other plate over here. As you can see. Here we have some butternut squash that's been pureed, kind of like mashed potatoes. It's great for the autumn. Uh, I just take butternut squash, I, I cube it up kind of like you would for a mashed potato. And then I add one or two potatoes in there. About 25% of the mix, I add potatoes because it gives it that fluffiness and that richness, that, that starchiness to it. Um, and other than that, I finish it with a little butter and, and uh, milk, just like you would a mashed potato. It makes a, a great dish for the autumn. And then I have rainbow carrots. These are actually purple carrots and, and orange carrots that I just slice and then glaze. Okay, very, very That's simple great. preparation. This sauce here is one of the Scoffier sauces. It's Marchand de Vin. It's a, a beef stock that's been reduced down into a glaze and then finished with red wine and shallots. So let me go ahead and the crowd my camera here. Okay. So a little, little sauce on our plate here. It's a nice way to use your veal stock you're going to make. Yeah, great, great for the leftovers from the assignments. Yes. All right, let's pull a couple pieces of this beautiful steak onto here. It's perfectly medium rare. Look at that. Rare. Wonderful. Okay. So as we look at this dish here, you'll notice the steak is actually cooked medium rare all the way across. It's, it's other than the very edge where I've seared, there's no bands of gray or overcooked dried meat. It's perfectly medium rare all the way through. I didn't have to watch it. It's, it's basically on autopilot. Once you get it going, you're, you're totally there. Okay, so there we go. So a New York strip with Marchand Davin sauce, glazed rainbow carrots, and butternut squash. Great dish for the fall. So are there any more questions for us today? Do we have any more questions out there? Uh, where can you find, um, you already addressed it once, but uh, if you could touch up on where you could find these immersion circulators and sous vide machines. The question was, where can we find this uh, uh, machines to cook sous vide style? Okay. So. I'm, I'm betting that you have an igloo cooler in the garage somewhere, okay? The sous vide supreme, Amazon is the best place to buy it. They've got great pricing for it. And in fact, we're going to put together a forum post later this afternoon, and we're going to put links so that you can, guys can just click and go straight to them, and we'll put all the different systems on there. But Amazon sells this for around $300, and it does come with a vacuum machine, uh, so that's kind of an added bonus. This, the immersion circulator here, again from Amazon. I'm a big Amazon fan. Um, I can get anything there. Nice. Uh, this is the Innova, A-N-O-V-A, uh, immersion circulator. It runs for about $160. It's by far my personal favorite of all of these. It's just a versatile workhorse. Um, you plug it in, you set the temperature. I don't know if you guys can, can see the, the digital display. It's very easy to read. You can change the different, whatever you want to change, time, minutes, um, temperatures. It, it's all programmable. And then this is called a Lexan, which we use in restaurants, and they cost about $18. Uh, but you could also put this right into the side of a large stock pot. You could put it into the, uh, into the side of a cooler. Anything that you can put a water bath into and then plug this into it, it just clamps to the side. So One like, advantage with that one, you can cook a lot more product than you do on this machine. You absolutely. can only put so many pieces of uh, protein in here. With that one, you can use a bigger Lexon and cook, like I said, 100, 150 pieces of uh, chicken or steak. So that one you can use for bigger you know, amounts, more quantities. And not only is it adjustable in size, but because this one doesn't actually circulate, this water just sits here. So you have to be very careful not to overpack this. If you put a bunch of steaks in here, you end up with hot spots and cool spots. It yes. wouldn't cook very evenly. But because this water is constantly moving and flowing, 
we can actually put quite a bit more product in here and, and then get an even cooking from it. So Wonderful. 160 bucks. It's a little pricey, but if you're serious about sous vide, it's my personal favorite. Don't buy one of the $900 ones. This is all that you'll need. And it works perfect, which is uh, demonstrated. It works great. So you don't have to buy like a very expensive machine to end up with a wonderful product. This yeah. one works perfect. Absolutely. How do you sous vide eggs? We have another question. How do we sous vide eggs, Chef? Okay, sous vide eggs, very, very difficult. Not really, I'm joking. <laughs> we, we, I used up all the eggs or I'd show you right now. You literally take the egg, just as if you were gonna make a hard boiled egg. Egg in the shell, drop it in the water. I do it at 75 degrees Celsius, which is around 150 60. degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Drop it in here. Um, it takes about 13 to 14 minutes. And then again, you can leave them in here for a longer period of time. And they won't overcook. They won't overcook. So like that's what's great for restaurants. You go into a ramen shop and they always finish their, their, their ramen with eggs. You set this up and basically throughout your entire dinner service, your eggs are just floating around waiting for you to be ready for them. And when you need them, you pop them and you put them right on the dish. That's, Same that's thing with your steaks or with chicken. I mean, you can be, when you start thinking about the restaurant life, the fact that a customer orders and you have eight minutes to get this dish out to their table, something like this is, it's a game changer. Yes. Not only does it produce better quality food, um, evenly cooked, but from a timing and logistical standpoint, that's a chef's best friend. That's why we're seeing it become such a big deal <laughs> in the restaurants. I wish I had one of these when I was working, like they say, weddings, banquets. It would change a lot of your stress. <laughs> Absolutely. Any other questions today? So, all right. So we're going to do a few more of these shows over the, over the next month or so. Um, we have a new sous vide class, so check it out. You can you can find it on escafeonline.com, um, and then we'll do some more different techniques and we'll show some recipes and stuff. But today we just really wanted to talk about the different types of machines and the options, and that you don't have to spend a fortune to start kind of experimenting with this this hot new cooking trend. And this is great. Like you can see, it's very easy. We have another question out here. Sure. Yeah. You a little bit, but it looks like a few people missed it. They want to know how do you, do you maintain the temperature in the cooler? The question was, how do we, do we maintain the temperature in the cooler? Okay. So because the cooler is insulated, it's going to actually hold temperature. It loses about one to two degrees per hour. So if I put liquid in here, if I bring a stock pot of water to 140 degrees, put my thermometer to make sure, and then I pour it into the cooler and close the lid, I know that for the next hour to two hours, I'm only going to lose a couple degrees. Now, if we want to do, and that's why I recommend short cooking time items in this. Um, steaks, shrimp, uh, eggs, things like that. Things like the chicken where we cooked it for several hours, or if you're going to do like a, a short rib where you're going to go for three days, igloo is probably not your best, safest yes. bet. But you can actually open it up, stick your thermometer in there, and add additional hot water. But at that point, you start kind of fluctuating. You start fluctuating. You know, people ask me, well, can I just do this on the stove? And, and the answer is technically yes, yes, you can. You can put a pot of water on the stove, turn the temperature down, put your thermometer in there, and watch it. And that will work fine for the 15 minutes that it takes to cook an egg or the 15 minutes it takes to cook some shrimp. But if you think about two and a half hours on chicken, it's going to get too cold, it's going to get too yeah. hot. It just doesn't stay steady. Whether you're on gas or on electric, they just don't stay steady that way, which is why having some type of device with the, with the thermometer that's watching the temperature is really important. How can you get grill marks on the chicken? We have another question. How can we get grill marks on the chicken after it's sous vide? We put it on the grill. So it's simple so as that. Just as we, just as we clear, crisped up the skin today, so the chicken was completely cooked, we can take that cooked chicken out of the sous vide machine and just mark it on the grill because we don't need to cook it. All we need to do is get that flavor, that yes. Maillard reaction of that, that crispiness that's going to happen. Um, you know, I read an article recently about barbecue. I'm from Texas, so barbecue is a big part of my life. It's kind of a religion. Um, but they talked about even doing barbecue sous vide, where you really? cook the brisket completely sous vide and then pull it out and smoke it afterwards. Wow, um, that's because great. sous vide, and, and we can get into the science, but there's myoglobin, which is what the smoke adheres to and gives you that mm -hmm. flavor. Because sous vide doesn't cook it higher than the myoglobin denatures, you can actually completely sous vide it, make it very tender, and then smoke it for an hour or so and still get the same effect as if it had been on the barbecue pit for, for two days. Yeah, wow, that's so, great. Pretty exciting stuff. There's a lot of things you can experiment with searing or grilling beforehand, then chilling and then putting it in the sous vide package, or cooking it sous vide and then finishing it on the grill or in a saucepan. And you can hold it for a couple of days or a week, save it after it's cooked in, a, in sous vide, right? Once it's vacuum sealed? Yeah, I wouldn't can... hold it in the machines, but no, once no, it's sealed. No, no, in the refrigerator, though. Yeah, you yes. can cool it down. It's important that you put it into an ice bath because it's, it's vacuum sealed. So you don't want to just throw it in the, in the cooler. It'll stay warm for a very long time. So take it, put it into a bucket of ice water, um, it won't hurt it because it's all vacuum sealed. Put it in the ice water, bring the temperature down to a safe level, 
and then put it in the refrigerator and it'll be good for a couple weeks. So you can do this for, you launch people that are like busy working so you can cook this for like Sunday night and make lunch for the whole week. Absolutely. And it'd be great still. Yeah. So do we have anybody else out there who has any questions? Yeah. All right. Well, well thanks thank for having for, me today. This has been a great time. We'll, we'll do some thank more. Thank you, Chef Randall. I'm going to have you come back one of these days to show some more great dishes with Subi cooking. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me this morning. I will see you next week with another wonderful topic. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you.